Uh, right, let's talk about Wales, shall we? Um, it's scrapped, basically, every... Not everyone, but pretty much most uh, major road building projects in their country. Did you guess why? I asked you before the break. I said two words, one N, second one Z. Uh, of course, this is all about net zero, protecting the environment and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, only projects that meet strict criteria uh, will be passed. So, for example, not increasing carbon emissions or the overall number of cars on the road. As I was saying, Joe, some people are saying this is world leading. It's really stunning and brave. I think it's absolutely ludicrous. I think this whole net zero thing has gone too far. I think pack it in trying to dictate how people get around their own towns and cities. Go away and focus on something else. Thank you very much. Um, well, I think it's a really good thing. And uh, I think the first thing I would say is I think most people, if you went out and asked people on the streets of Doncaster or London or Liverpool or wherever and said, what does net zero mean? I think most people wouldn't have a clue. And I think that's part of the problem, that we fling it out. It, it's, a, it's a little slogan that politicians use and councils say. I think this is really good. What the Welsh Government is saying is that they are imposing much higher environmental standards before new roads will be given the go-ahead. And they're scrapping... Uh, 15, I think, of, of the um, ones that... No, were no, fi no oh, 15, 15 are going yeah, 15 ahead. 15 have gone ahead. The rest the are rest going to be scrapped, scrapped the rest or they're going to be rejigged. Right. Yeah, so I think, you know, if you look at the building that's going on, I can only speak for the south-east south of England, but where you've got huge, great developments of housing, that invariably ne leads to more roads. Now, most of those houses that are being built will have at least one, probably two, possibly three cars. That means the roads are getting clogged up. So then you have daft councils, like the one that um, I am and mis have the misfortune to live under, that say, well, we'll build a bypass for the extra cars. Now, you know, you will end up just clogging up. Um, what you need to do is to look at a joined-up policy that looks at transport and building and development. You also need, as critics have said... If you're not going to build roads, you need to look at public transport and you need to provide options for people. But we can't go on just ploughing through the countryside and the environment willy-nilly without looking at the impact. Look what's happened with HS2, you know, that isn't even going to deliver what it was promised in terms of speed or railway stations or journeys. Or and destination. Or destination. It's going to stop short so of where it was going to end. All that damage yeah. that has been done that is irreparable... Yeah has been done for no good reason. It's, gone, it's been done for your reason, of pushing people onto public but transport nobody two want, seconds yeah, ago. You but said nobody you wanted, wanted HS2 to go that way. What people wanted was east to west links. Mm. What do you make, Ben Habib? Well, I mean, just coming back on your planning policy point, boroughs right across the United Kingdom actually have restricted the number of car parking spaces you can have with housing. And, they, and they're increasingly pushing people towards public transport. But what I think is completely crazy about this policy, and so many ideologically driven um, policies that emanate from government, is that they are putting their ideology ahead of the economy. So they're saying, I don't know if either of you have driven in Wales, I have driven quite a lot in Wales. I have. The roads are appalling. The connectivity across Wales is appalling. If you want an economy to progress, you have to have interconnectivity. It's an absolute fundamental given. And this is not a transport policy. This is an anti-transport policy because it doesn't come alongside... I'm going to finish. It doesn't come alongside the development of public transport. Public transport also in Wales is shocking. So what they're doing is actually damaging the prospects of levelling up. They're going to make it more expensive for people to live in Wales, not more cost effective, more difficult to get around. And all of that, when we've already got the economy on its back foot with a cost of living crisis, actually one way to get something moving, I'm not a great fan of it, but one way to get an economy moving is to build roads, is to build national infrastructure, is to, is, is to you know, get better public services and so on. I'm not a great fan of it because I think we've done far too much government interference and we're going to talk about that in a second. But the idea of banning the development of roads as part of an ideology for net zero without thinking of the consequences economically is just daft as brushes. But, but Ben, surely you have to weigh up the consequences environmentally and that I mean we are looking at the moment this you may well have discussed it um, on the on the program you know the 
pollution that is going into our rivers and into our seas. But that's not the same as building roads where roads are needed. It's about the environment, and you can, you know, it's very easy to go, oh, net zero. Well, no, no, no. I mean, the, the pollution. Actually, I'm completely pollution with you on the pollution. Is disgusting. The, wa the water companies were privatised. Shareholders yeah. have put dividends ahead of national infrastructure, yeah. and there are billions of gallons of water leaked yeah. and so, wasted. You, know, you can't swim all these droughts that we have, exactly. which, by the way, people blame on climate change. Actually, is very significantly as a result of water companies not doing, well, the, and doing the right also, thing. It's also the result of people building on floodplains, and it's also the result... But all of that, Joe, jo, with respect, you're fighting thir battles that were won 30 well, years uh, ago. Yes. We don't build in floodplains anymore. Well, you know. they do. Round, round Kent, they well, do. I mean, it's and they're the even building places huge where, restrictions. You know, where there's... But they're not, because they just... Well, I, I'm, I'm a property developer, I can tell well, you. It's very okay. hard to build in a floodplain. I will talk to you afterwards <laughs> and, and give you the name of one, where they have just said, oh, actually, it'll be fine. You can do an, uh, a carbon offsetting thing. We'll allow this well, stuff to offsets. go into I mean, the, carbon but offsets. But this is going into the water table. Ca carbon then. offsets are one of the worst concepts of course, ever. It's, it's the notion that yeah. you can pay your way out. Either you cut yeah. back on your carbon emissions or Precisely. you don't. So you why know. would you even have that in there as a policy that allows developers to go on, build in places where it's unsuitable, it is polluting, it is going to cause huge problems in the long term. And the answer is, oh, well, well I tell you what, we'll give you some money for the raffle. But you, you... you mentioned the long term. The fact of the matter is, and this is why lots of this doesn't wash with me, quite frankly, I do think a lot of this is more about control and trying to dictate to people how they can travel, uh, which I don't appreciate. Um, I think it's more about control than it is about climate because uh, road projects, etc., that kind of infrastructure is long-term imp infrastructure. For the and betterment in the of long, mankind, yeah. Yes, but in the long term, my point is, if the, we're all to believe uh, whatever, we're all going to be driving electric cars. Which, so what is the pollution well, concerns there, but, then? But there's, there's an absolutely perfect example of something that hasn't been thought through. Electric cars are still really expensive to buy. There are insufficient charging points all around but the country. But that's because we're at the start of the technology curve. Yes, but if you're going to do something to encourage... I mean, to, to agree to a certain extent with... Yeah, you're, yeah, I agree with you. You know, actually, if you're going to try and change people's behaviour, which, you know, you might think nobody's got the right to do that, but if you want to get people off the roads, you absolutely have got to build or provide public transport that's affordable, accessible and realistic. So, of course, you don't do this, but I don't think there is anything wrong in saying we are going to bring in higher standards before but we But, Joe, give... this is a blanket policy against the building of roads. No, it's not. In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a part of the United Kingdom which is notoriously not, bad for roads. Ben, it's not a blanket policy. What they're saying is they are going to demand a much greater, uh, much higher standards that should not cause more pollution. I mean, if you're building more roads, that presumably is because... I mean, the road by definition, just the carbon Im embedded carbon in the creation of roads is... So if you take, if problem. you take, um, you know, does it take cars and vehicles out of small villages? Would they then become car free? Would you then have, you know, public transport hubs, for instance? You know, there's got to be a quid pro quo. But I think to actually have a serious debate and say we need to be a bit more stringent and make our commitment to the environment mean something then I think it's a good thing. Well, of course, that is, uh, if you're in the camp that you really do truly believe that all of this is about the climate. You might be familiar, by the way, with the story of uh, Wandsworth Council in London there. Uh, they've just been in trouble because they started uh, issuing their own tr uh, fines, basically, to drivers. They had these 20-mile-an-hour zones. They started issuing all these fines. Uh, it's they've just been deemed as unlawful. Uh, now the DVLA has been told not to share the driver information with this council to proceed with these uh, fines because it wasn't their jurisdiction to be able to do this. Great. Uh, so, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, lots of this just does not wash with me, does it with you? Um, silly, uh, says Christine, too much virtue signalling. Stopping road building is just not in the interest of the general public. Politicians, as usual, she says, uh, being out of touch with their electorate, uh, roads and wills. Uh, totally agreed with the panel. Uh, sorry, totally agreed with the council. Fantastic idea. Best thing ever. Um, anyway, he says, the best thing to come out of Wales is the A55. Um, no new roads means increased congestion, which means more pollution, which is exactly what the government is apparently trying to avoid, says a smart man called Peter, who's watching at the moment.